thank you all for coming out to this press conference. Very short notice, uh, just something I want to make sure we had a chance to at least echo into the community other than just a press release. Uh, I think most of you at this point understand why we are here, and I'm just going to update the community in, in the general scheme of over the last five years, I'll continue to echo this message across this entire county that this office will be transparent and we're going to be accountable, meaning when we know this community is going to know and the repercussions behind us knowing is someone is going to be held accountable to the degree as to whether they're disciplined from a suspension all the way up through termination. Just a few weeks ago, I was standing amongst you all talking about an internal investigation that we launched related to this PPP scandal, standing here with the U.S. Attorney General, 17 members were indicted. We put the handcuffs on them and turned them over to the federal, our federal partners. And once again, we're in a position where we had to arrest one of our own. Uh, not something that we're proud of, but most certainly something that I'm satisfied in the sense that our Public Corruptions Unit, our Office of Inspector General, and in this particular case, our Internet Crimes Against Children are doing precisely what we need them to do in terms of holding criminals accountable. Let's skip past the fact that we're talking about a deputy. A criminal is a criminal. I don't care if you're wearing a star on your chest or if you're a civilian. We're going to treat you all the same, which means we're going to hold you accountable to the laws of this state. Uh, unfortunately, earlier today, we had to arrest one of our deputies who has been here, employed for uh, about six years now, 35-year-old uh, Deputy Thomas. He was involved in an incident where he was responding to a domestic violence call, and ideally, an officer goes out to a site location with the intent to protect and serve the community or perhaps provide resources and mitigate this particular threat that may be taking place in the household. In this particular case, you got a deputy out here who did nothing more than take advantage. Take advantage of his powers, abuse his authorities, and solicit sexual solicitation of a minor. Now, you all have the arrest warrant, or will have access to it and have a chance to read through it, but what I can surmise from what I've been able to read and talking to our investigators, this here is one of the most grotesque uh, and deliberate attempts to really abuse a minor in our community. Many of you heard me t say this before, and I'll continue to echo and say it again. Uh, our most viable asset in this community are our kids. And if we can't protect them, we don't have a future not only in Broward County, but perhaps impact the old future of this country. And so to read this affidavit, this arrest warrant, and talk to our investigators and see a lot of deliberate efforts to be nothing more than a sexual predator is an insult to this agency, it's an insult to this profession, and it's an insult to everybody who ever served in this capacity. So despite the hardships of having to arrest one of our own, I'm glad that we were able to do it and prevent uh, a child from being abused sexually or victimized in any other form or capacity. Sticking with our standard practices um, and protocols because he is a sworn law enforcement officer, uh, afforded certain rights, he will be set aside. Uh, on suspension, administrative leave without pay, uh, pending the investigation, both internally and the criminal allegations that he's going to have to face. I'm going to pause and allow you to ask me some questions on this because there's a lot of ways I can go, and I think this is better driven if you give me precise questions that you may have. Sure. So, did the, the incident that you just referenced while he was on a call, so that occurred while he was on duty? Correct. So, are there other incidences, or is this? Sure, so I can elaborate on that. From an investigative standpoint, once we got information and a tip that this deputy was involved in pot potential soliciting a minor and things of that nature, one of the things we wanted to do was to confirm those allegations and have our own internal investigation that would give us an opportunity to get facts. Facts is the most important part of this thing. In order to do that, our investigators elected to work with our Internet Crimes Against Children because they have an expertise in this arena, providing all type of information to the community, safeguard measures, and we're accustomed um, through ICAC with dealing with sexual predators. This is what they do, this is their expertise. Our public corruption unit are the experts in terms of internal examination, investigations, but why not tap into the best resource we have, which is our own? And so our ICAC uh, group were part of the investigation, and in this case, pretending to be a minor and having these communications back and forth. So that's their involvement. So they did this after they heard he was doing something in person with a different minor? With the same minor. So we'll backtrack. We go out to a domestic violence call. Deputy arrives there back in September. Have communications with the young girl there, 17 years of age. At some point, exchange phone numbers. Have their text messages going back and forth. And throughout that texting and communicating, there had been strategic efforts to plan and meet with the minor, sexual communications, 
um, pictures being sent uh, while on duty, exposing his, his penis and things of that nature. And so that really was part of ICAC's involvement to be able to have that expertise, allow this dialogue to continue so we can have legitimate criminal charges that go beyond just administrative concerns. I'm going to go back to what I said. It's not just about administrative uh, compliance here. We're talking about criminal behavior of the worst kind. As a law enforcement officer, there's two things I can't stand the most. One, anyone who's willing to run inside of a church, a school, and conduct a mass shooting and kill innocent, unarmed people, it's the most cowardice behavior I can imagine. The second, sexual predators, those going out there trying to victimize our kids because they're capitalizing on the immaturity, the lack of understanding. And if you're going to do that to a child, what else did we miss or what else are you willing to do? And so when we got this thing going in terms of internal affairs, we went all in. It's a combination of it. Um, I think one of the things we've seen, and a very good job from our public corruptions unit in ICAC, was at some point we wanted to make sure that we took the minor out of this and not expose them unnecessarily to potentially getting hurt, harmed, or injured, or any other psychological damages that may come with that type of communication when you're a minor. So it's better suited to have our investigators take the lead, handle the communications, etc., just like you would see to catch a predator on other different shows, very back, similar background in terms of they maintain the communication, they collected the evidence, and then they submitted that in one packet with our pu uh, public corruptions unit. Any indication through your investigation <clears throat> that this may not have been the first time and maybe there have been other kids involved? We haven't seen any indicators that there may have been other kids involved, but I can tell you this would be his last time. Um, there's no coming back from this. Uh, one thing I'm getting very annoyed with is this notion that we have to keep playing this game of due process. Those things that take place. But if you read this arrest affidavit and you look at the evidence that I looked at, there's only one outcome that's going to happen here when this case is closed. Sheriff, you said you guys got a tip. Who did you get a tip from? Uh, was it parents? Was it? I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was the Dad. one of the father. The father, correct. It was the father. So you're talking about a 17 year old who is involved in a domestic violence situation with her parents or guardians, and she is singled out by a deputy and then victimized. Yeah, I mean, that's in a nutshell. You, when you're arriving to a domestic violence call, whether it be a minor or an, or an adult, that's not the time to engage in trying to date someone or solicit a contact number or to maintain communications that are inappropriate in this case where you're sending nude photos while you're on duty, a multitude of different text mas messages of plotting and planning to meet in a hotel, all type of vulgar commentary about the type of sex uh, components you want to supply or, or impose, in my opinion, upon this young lady, it's just inexcusable. Are you concerned they ever met in person? I'm sorry? Do you know if they ever met in person? That I don't know, um, outside of the initial That's encounter. Initial. That, I don't see that within the report. Um, but again, we're talking about text messages and investigative practices. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. Maybe something's discovered later on where they were met, but that's not what we have right now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, you're nailing it. I mean, you're, you're, your frustration is precisely why this one here is really bothersome for me. Because we're sending you out into the field after you've taken an oath to protect and serve. People call 911 when they're at their worst. They don't call us when they're at their best. And they're hoping that when we respond, when we get on scene, that the, the person is going to be qualified, competent, and morally sound to do the job, and they damn sure better be on time. They're not expecting to be victimized a second time by an officer's act in a sense of engaging with their daughter behind their back, texting, formulating a plan to have sex with them, and all these other variables that took place in this case. So, yes, it's very egregious, and it's going to be dealt with swiftly into the severe letters that we have in this administration, and I'm going to encourage the prosecutor to make sure he pursues this aggressively. No, I, look, unfortunately, it's an isolated event, right? There's almost 6,000 people here, and on an annual basis, collectively in this county, we're answering almost 2 million calls for services, right? We're not seeing this happen frequently and all the time, but all it takes is this time, and we need to hold that person accountable because there is a ripple effect of messaging. When I'm talking to this community and updating you on affairs that are taking place in this agency, 
that's part of my responsibility as a constitutional officer, to educate the community. But there is a secondary impact of deterrence internally that officers that are working here are seeing zero tolerance when it comes to any form of misconduct. If you think you're going to violate the law and manipulate documents and files and, you know, take money from the federal government, you're going to be gone. If you think it's appropriate to manipulate a young 17-year-old kid into sex, you're going to be gone. If you think that you're going to go ahead and violate, 65 times in five years I've had to stand here and terminate someone. 17 just a week ago. And here's another one. I will keep standing here as many times as it take until every damn body in this agency gets the message. Period. No, one of the things about our relationship with the U.S. Attorney Office on this one, once we lateral the case over, they have full custody control of that case. And unless the U.S. Attorney has some new information to disclose with me that I can share with the public, I really just don't have any updates right now. Can you talk about his background as a deputy in his six years here? How was he perceived on the job? What kind of Honestly, I don't know all the ins and outs of what he did over the last six years, but I'm going to tell you what I tell every new cadet. You're only as good as the last call you're on. I don't care if he won one of our most prestigious Medal of Honors. It doesn't matter. It's what he did on this particular case that sizes up his entire career and the end of his career. Can you tell us the date in September that, that fall was? I do have it. Marissa, we'll, we'll handle that afterwards. We'll, we'll get it over to you if we can. Is this a teenage girl or a teenage boy? Girl. Okay. 